We've all done it, flying in VR and lost track of where we are, want to check out our position on little nav map. Or perhaps check for that airline code on Sky Vector through your browser. Finally got the time to check out that website you've been meaning to visit. Or on a long flight and want to listen to the dulcet tones of your favourite YouTuber. Or perhaps watch a tutorial. A festive welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark, thanks for watching and let's get started with a message from this video sponsor. VR Wave are leading manufacturers of prescription lenses for your VR headset. I use their lenses every single time I'm in VR and can personally recommend their products. And they're reasonably priced. From the 15th to the 30th of December, they're offering a substantial discount on their lens products. Plus you can get an additional 5% discount off your whole order at checkout by using the promo code shown on screen. VR Wave provide lenses for a wide range of different headsets, which includes the Pico 4, MetaQuest 2, HP Reverb, Valve Index, and many more. Visit their website, link in the notes below. They have a section on their website to help you with your order if you're not sure what to do. And whether you need prescription glasses or not, I recommend their blue light and anti-glare filters. Prescription lenses will transform your comfort in VR. The application we're talking about today is FS Desktop and allows you to import almost any window into your VR cockpit, something that's not been available in Microsoft Flight Simulator until now. This is made available to us from the independent developer Chris. He's the same dev that brought us the excellent FS Kneeboard, the perfect VFR flight planning tool for VR users. Before buying it, you can use it free for three days and if you do decide to buy it, well, you can choose how much to pay. Anything from 15 US all the way up to 50 US. So somewhat uniquely, the developer's letting you decide what the value of the package is for you. I like to believe over the years, the SimHanger channel has built up a reputation and a fairly large following based on my honesty and factual approach to various reviews. And this one is no exception. And I need to state a number of things very clearly. Firstly, this is in its very early stages of development. That's why at the beginning of the video, the more observant of you will have noticed this is a preview and not a review. If you're interested in this package, and yeah, why wouldn't you be? I strongly encourage you to try the free three-day trial first. In my personal opinion, the only reason you would buy this package at this point is to support and encourage the developer, as I have done. With FS Kneeboard, the developer's other package, he has continually updated it. And after each update, there's been an improvement. More features and enhanced usability. I have no reason to believe that won't be the case with FS Desktop. This package has great potential, but currently there are bugs and limitations in terms of interactivity, ease of setup, window size, and the occasional crash. With all that out the way, let's get on and have a look at the package and focus on what we can do. FS Desktop consists of two elements. The first part is a server side, which you run before you start your sim and minimize on your desktop. Second part is the application itself, which is accessible in sim directly from the top toolbar. And the main program is installed in your community folder. Any applications that you want to access during your VR flight need to be open on your desktop. This can be done before or during your flight. You'll also notice the sim needs to be in window mode. And for best results, I found to shrink it down but maintain its 16 to 9 ratio, more or less. This program can be used in 2D. Once again, window mode is recommended, but you don't really need to shrink it down. The window mode in VR makes little to no difference to what you see in the headset. So it's not an issue here. I've recorded what we see in sim in VR, but because I've had to shrink the desktop down and zoom into one eye, please excuse the quality of the recording, but this was a very difficult thing to record. We're now in sim at Burning Blue Design's amazing Fenland Airport, or aerodrome I should say, activated the toolbar, and from the top toolbar we'll select FS Desktop. Once clicked, it'll open up a new window. And in that window, it will show you any and all of the open applications on your desktop. Click on the refresh bar at the bottom if you've recently opened new applications. Note they need to be open and not minimized. 
I've got a PDF open, little nav map, and my Google browser. The size of the window can be adjusted, both vertically and horizontally. In addition, you can place the window wherever you want. This is done by left-clicking and holding down the mouse button and then dragging the window to your desired position. To select a window to become active, simply left-click. The view changes from Window Picker to Viewer. This is Little Nav Map and we can see my aircraft at Finland. I can interact, I turn the aircraft position on and off, and I can interact with various other functions. What is very restrictive and not fully supported at this time is your ability to zoom in and out, or to scroll down using the mouse. Interaction can be a little hit and miss. Here I'm trying to zoom in and out, and it's not responding. The developer is working on improving mouse interaction. But these are some of the limitations and frustrations you'll come up against at this early stage. Now selected the PDF. This would be ideal for something like checklists, for example. Just a note that I do have the window larger than what it would normally be in the cockpit. This is due to the lower resolution that I'm recording this at, due to the need to zoom in. Once again, I couldn't scroll using my mouse. I had to use the top menu bar. And on this occasion, I couldn't use the plus and minus to change the size of the text. I could, however, change the size of the window overall. Just be aware that changing the window size does have an impact on the resolution of the displayed item. That's a little nav map and the PDF checked. Now let's go to my browser. I'm currently on the Just Flight website. And we can see that it's relaying the information live to us, which is great. But once again, no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't scroll down the web page. I could, however, change websites. Let's try Scan Computers. There we are. I was able to access some of the submenus, but not many. Let's now try Sky Vector. Interactivity with Sky Vector was very limited. Click on an airport or a beacon to bring up the information. Sometimes it worked and sometimes it wouldn't. These limitations are frustrating, but the developer is working on improving it as mentioned previously, and I'm sure it'll be much better soon. Staying within my browser, I've now changed to my channel page. Let's change the tab to videos. There we are. And let's see if we can activate a video. I'll choose one of my more recent ones. And the video starts playing. Top three, my favorite three hardware peripherals. VR excluded, that'll be in an upcoming video. Welcome to the Sim Hanger. My name's Mark. Thanks very much for watching. I was able to interact with the video. I was able to mute the volume, select a different starting point for the video and so on. Something like this could be very useful if you're trying to follow along with a tutorial or you're on a long flight and you're looking for something to break the monotony between Heathrow and JFK. But once again, I was not able to scroll down the page or use the scroll bars to move down. Now change channels. This is 737NG Driver, well known for his airliner videos. Welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm an airline pilot, and today we are going to fly the famous IGF. I'm in the Cessna 152 and I'm back over the fens and shortly turning back towards Fendland Aerodrome. I've got FS Desktop minimized. Let me just quickly expand that so we can see where we are. I'm going to select the little nav map. There it is. Now I can see my position in relation to the Finland airport. I found little nav map work quite well with this application, although occasionally I did have to refresh the page. Very useful and conscious of different graphic and system settings. You're able to adjust both image quality, low, medium and high, as well as the refresh rate. Again, slow, medium and fast. I did find image quality on low, as I was flying in 2K, was basically unreadable. Image quality at high and medium refresh rate seem to work well for me. This application does have some hit on the FPS. So in conclusion, I'd say FS Desktop has great potential, and it is usable with some significant restrictions in its current form. But in my opinion, I regard this as an alpha release. I've been waiting for something like this to come to the sim. And I'm certainly looking forward to future developments and improvements. But we're not there yet. This is certainly one to keep your eye on. And I'd strongly recommend try before you buy. 
but only buy this if you want to support the developer at this time. Thank you very much for joining me today. I hope you found it useful and informative. Stay well, look after yourself, see you again soon, and bye for now.